So I'm going to be starting another painting today. Uh, in my last, my last YouTube video, I was going to originally start this canvas. Uh, the reference was going to be a girl who was in a jumper later hosen-y kind of thing with these great suspenders. And I just like the position of her legs, the, the dark later hosen, and I had some ideas of how I was going to work something strong into it. But then I got in here and started laying out the canvas and hung it up and realized I wasn't that into it, not yesterday. So I had decided instead to go with a second image that I've been, it's been on my roster to do anyway. These two young girls in their summer outfits, so these light cotton summer outfits, smocks, and you know, I look at look at it, <clears throat> excuse me, and I can feel the sun, and it just feels it, it's pleasant. Well, today I walked in and looked at it and realized I'm not in the mood for pleasant right now. No, not for this light-hearted pleasant. And so, if I, if I pardon me, if I were to start it, it would feel disingenuous. And I need to feel passionate about the about the reference in order for me to get into the feeling of it and really pull up something decent, really strong that other people connect with. So I've taken this and I'm putting that aside and I've decided to take this image and work from it. And it's not that I'm, you know, deeply passionate about young women holding puppies, uh, you know, put, put in that context. It actually makes me kind of sick thinking about it. but. I do really enjoy this image and there's something I'm connecting with, I'm feeling passionate about and I feel a genuine connection with because of the solitary image of this woman, which is something I understand completely. You know, it's just she and her dog, like me and Bugsy, don't tell the kitty I said that, but you know, there's something really just genuine about the way she's holding the dog and the, you know, she loves him. But I think there's something deeper I can find in there, a deeper understory, a deeper undercurrent that I can give the painting. So when I was starting this painting yesterday, when I was laying it out, I had it five feet high and four feet wide, turned it sideways to brush on the black, and uh, now I'm going to start because I've changed images again. The two girls, excuse me, the two girls were originally going to go here, but now I've changed, changed images again, changed reference material, so it's going to be turned back up to four foot wide, five foot high. And I've talked about this before, how it's okay to change your mind. Just because I picked out one image doesn't mean I have to stick with it. Just because I picked out a second image doesn't mean I have to stick with it. Just because I picked out a third image, if I didn't feel like doing this today, I wouldn't do it. I need, what the most important thing is, to feel a genuine, passionate connection with the reference material or with whatever you're painting. I've done a number of um, abstracts and I get myself in a certain method mode to paint, whether it's abstracts or, re or you know, the abstract realism or expressionist, whatever you want to call it, that I do. There's a genuine feeling behind it. When there isn't, people feel it, they see it in the work, and they don't want it. Like me, the viewer has to feel a connection with the work. They have to feel it's genuine. You know, this isn't earth shattering. This isn't Goya. You know, this isn't anyone being shot up against a wall. It's a woman with her, with her dog. But I think anyone who is alone, fairly alone, could feel it without being driven to tears. You know, I've got to find that fine line. So in finding that fine line between, between oh look, it's a, you know, a pretty woman with a dog, and oh my God, I feel so alone, you know, I have to find something in between and fairly complex to play with. You know, the undercurrent has to be complex in choosing something like this. Or in choosing the young girls in the, in the smock. 
the undercurrent, the understory, the method behind it, what's going to drive me, what's going to drive the painting, has to be complex for people to really feel it. It can be a pretty girl with a puppy, but that's just not me. There are a million people who paint that way. That's, that's just not me. I prefer something a little bit more interesting. But anyway, uh, I'm going to start laying this out with, with aerosol. And I'm just, I'm just doing this so you can see that there are alternatives to, to whatever the you know, cut and dry stuff that people have been telling me to do. I usually start off with a teal, but I've got a yellow in my hand, so I guess I'll start off with a yellow aerosol. This is Montana Gold. I don't really care about it. I'm not, I'm not passionate about this. I've tried other aerosols that I like. I like better, but I can't get to them right now. So we're going to deal with what we have and not be a big baby. And this, I'm going to lay, lay down some lines. I'm going to cat this up somewhere. All I'm doing, all I'm doing in here, and I keep, I have a stool that I keep getting up and down on. All I'm doing in here is laying down some lines. It's not definite. Because actually, I think once I turn this right side up, I think I want her head further aside. I don't want her right in the middle. But this is just to kind of give me an idea. And I don't want to go too thick. Because if I'm using aerosol, if I go too thick, um, it can crack over time. Plus, I'm going to be going over this with some other aerosol and putting in design and texture. So there's a little bit of that. And as we know, I really, I prefer um, taking the canvas and turning it, turning it, turning it the whole time I'm working. So that the image doesn't become stagnant. My view doesn't become stagnant. The ideas don't become stagnant. We want this to feel alive. We want to feel the energy of this living person. I recently saw a, um, okay, be floppy. I recently saw a, um, a video or a picture of the new Kate Middleton portrait, and people have actually rejected it. Um, it has been rejected as uh, excuse me, the official royal portrait of Kate Middleton. And after seeing pictures of it, I can understand why. It's nice, it, but it's flat. And what's funny, what was said in this one video I saw in Huffington Post about it, was she looks, she looks dead. There's a dead look in her eye. It's a great copy of, of a photograph. But that's not why we do portraits, so that we have an excellent copy of a photograph. It's so we can pull out an undercurrent and a life and energy they can't be seen by the camera. I'm just sprayed on myself. And I don't think it matters if you're doing portraits or lighthouses or ocean. It's that life. It's the undercurrent of a story and the complex story that may be lying underneath all of that paint that matters. And it's the, the artist that did it has been doing, um, has done a number of, of royal, whoops, royal portraits. So it's actually kind of shocking that it was rejected. But it also made me glad because it really was mediocre. I mean, it was beautiful likeness. It's just mediocre. So here are the shapes. 
I don't, I don't know what the camera is capturing right now. But I've just got basic shapes. And you, whether you're using aerosol up on my stool, whether you're doing this or not with aerosol, you have to lay out the painting. Um, I'll, I'll actually go in in a minute and lay it out with chalk. In fact, let me grab a piece. I like the color, though, of the aerosol. For me, it helps set the tone. There's her hair. She's got this gray hair. It's going to go off this way. Um, but the colors help to set the tone. Again, it's not set in stone. I can already see where I've laid things out incorrectly, but it's okay. It's all fixable. I'm going to have t-shirts made up. It's all fixable. Yeah, see, I can already tell where this is wrong. But it's okay. And I'm putting her head fairly up on the canvas, but I want her hair coming out. I'm going to ex oh, excuse me, extend her hair. Now I use I usually use um, a lighter color chalk because I have to wipe it off. If I get it wrong, I got to wipe it off, and I don't want it everywhere. But it's okay. It's just it's just chalk. It'll come off regardless. Not nearly as makes as much of a mess as the aerosol does. Listen, I got a lot of work to do this to lay this out. So I'm gonna shut the camera off and get to work. And hopefully you'll see new pictures in a little while. But there we are. This is how we lay out a painting with aerosol. Turn the canvas. Just worry about basic shapes. It's all fixable. Blah, blah, blah. It's just a painting. And it is a painting. Ciao.